I've lived a good part of my life in an odd netherworld. Working people are suspicious of my diction and demeanor, and white-collar people wonder what a guy like me, who looks and sounds like them, is doing driving a truck and moving furniture for a living. The truth is, I wasn't brought up to be a long-haul mover. I was raised by conscientious parents, educated by the Catholic Church, and fine-tuned by the sensibilities of a prestigious New England liberal arts college. None of it stuck because Dan Bartoli, the proprietor of Dan Service Station in Coscob, Connecticut, where I got my first job, nailed me at an impressionable time and introduced me to low company and hard work. Working at Dan's blasted me out of the sheltered, church-oriented life I had known. My baptism began the first instant of my first day at the gas station, when Dan trotted out his employee orientation speech. The middle word of this enterprise is service, and that's what we give here. The first word of this enterprise is Dan's. That's me. You give service and remember that this business belongs to me. We'll get along fine. You got that, you dim fucking peckerwood? Before that day, I can't remember ever being sworn at. Before that day, I had never heard an adult say the word fuck. I was fifteen years old. Dan wasn't kidding about service. You had to wash all the windows, check the oil, the power steering fluid, the brake fluid, and the transmission fluid, wipe off any spilled gas, and chat up the customer about the latest Yankee game or town gossip, all in a fluid motion so as not to waste anyone's time, but still give full value to each customer. Dan was a master. He knew every customer's name, their kids' names, and the latest news from the church, firehouse, rotary meeting, or school. In public, Dan always had the perfectly appropriate response for any social situation. It was an elaborate ritual, and regular customers would stop and get two bucks worth of gas just for the experience. I don't know why, but I felt right at home. I liked being around machines and being taught how to use them properly. My father couldn't distinguish the business end of a screwdriver from the handle. I liked the responsibility, too. It was a huge adolescent passage to be selected to work the night shift from 6 to 9 p.m., because it meant I was a trusted member of the team. In my family, where the term school night had a religious ring and all social activities were prescribed, work was the one exception. Since I lived only a few minutes walk away and was eager to find some solace from my seven brothers and sisters sequestered in a too-small house ruled by the iron fist of an Irish matriarch, I was a ready candidate for the night shift. The idea now seems incredible that a lone fifteen-year-old boy would be placed in a gas station on U.S. Route 1 at night, collecting cash, but it was a more innocent time. Dan's cash management protocol was that whenever we had fifty dollars in the till, we were to slip thirty into the safe and keep twenty for the bank. His instructions about what to do if we are robbed were unequivocal. Give the blue gum all the money, fill up his stolen car, get the license plate, and call the cops. Even your measly life isn't worth twenty bucks to me.'